Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Grammy Music Education Coalition Virtual Town Hall Live. We're going to get started in another minute or so and let some people log on and get caught up with us. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a minute. Again, welcome everybody to the Grammy Music Education Coalition Virtual Town Hall Live. We're really excited to be joining you here in this first week in June and uh, back from our, our, our week off last week. So we're super excited this week and that we have a bunch of students joining us. They're awesome, they're wonderful, and it's great to hear from them. We're gonna kick this off with Lori Schwartz Reichel, who is an author and educator and just an overall awesome human being. And She's gonna get started and introduce uh, the students, introduce yourself and introduce uh, this session. So thanks for joining us and I'll be back in a minute. Due to the global pandemic, the need for virtual teaching and learning has been immediate and limiting as many aspects of creating, performing, responding and connecting are deeply missed. However, along with great challenges have come some remarkable opportunities. Many students, teachers, schools and districts are seizing the day to create, collaborate and connect not just locally, but globally. We are taking advantage of this moment to explore, experiment and engage both professionally and personally. And as educators, hopefully we've taken the time to reflect and refresh on our teaching, our home lives and ourselves. A few weeks ago, I accessed a social media educator support group and was drawn to one particular question. It asked, what is your biggest realization as a result of remote teaching? I spent almost an hour reading the responses from this single post. The answers were diverse, often lengthy, and had a mix of positive and negative commentary. A majority of the responses demonstrated care and concern for all stakeholders involved in, education, in the educational process, including students and their families, educators, and administrators. In their responses, some of the teachers spoke of their individual feelings of stress, exhaustion, and even contemplation of another career path. Others felt inspired to create new material, attempt new tools, and to permanently swap out former lessons with virtual ones. Some spoke with joy of students who typically aren't engaged in a live classroom who now demonstrate superior learning online. Others disappointingly mentioned some students applying less effort, minimal practice, and even no engagement virtually. Some spoke of the taxing impact on them as parents and on the families of their students. But almost every response contained a message regarding the fact that they miss their students. For the last few months, we've seen and read endless articles, webinars, and other virtual sessions, including only adults who have been invited to participate as the interviewees. Honestly, I was tired of listening to adults. I wanted to know what you, the students, think, feel, and suggest. So I pitched an idea to Ryan to allow me to interview students so adults can hear your voices, understand your experiences of virtual learning, and hopefully use the information that you provide us today to achieve at the highest levels of our standards of music education. So let's get virtual. Let's let a teacher talk with students on the front screens. So Jillian, let's begin with you. Could you introduce yourself to us and tell us a little bit about where you live, where you go to school, how you perform in music? Hi, my name is Jillian Gray. I live in Pottsgrove, Pennsylvania. I go to the Pottsgrove School District. I just finished fifth grade. I play field hockey, basketball, a little bit of piano, I play saxophone, viola, and I love musical theater. 
Awesome, Jillian. And so I actually know your mother really well because we were college uh, students together. We attended school together and we started our careers together. And your mother is a wonderful music educator. I know that she is extremely proud of you and talks about all the different ways that you participate in music and bring joy to music at home. So thanks so much. We can't wait to hear more from you. Michael, do you want to talk to us and tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, my name is Michael Lamb. Um, I just passed fifth grade. I will be going to Mickelson Middle School. Um, I play tr trombone and violin and a little bit of piano. Wow, that's wonderful. So you play all those instruments and I also know that you have two siblings who are also musical as well, right? Great, so you have lots of music in your home. Okay. Madden, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, my name is Madden Novogratz. Um, I'm 14. I have two days left of eighth grade. Um, I sing and I play guitar and I'm also a songwriter. Um, and what else? I have four siblings, um, all of which are musicians as well. So. Yeah. And although Madden and I have never met, we come from a very extensive uh, family and she has great news to share. She recently just released her own first single. So congratulations to you, Madden, on that. Jaden Mandler Sanders, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Jaden Mandler Sanders. I live in San Jose, California. I go to Westmont High School and I completed in ninth grade. And Jaden, can you tell everybody who your band director is? Yeah, my mom. <laughs> and my dad was my band director. So we could save our stories for another episode, right, Jaden? Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. And finally, Jaden Howard, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Jaden Howard. I live in Elkridge, Maryland, and I go to Long Beach High School in Howard County, Maryland. And I participate in music by playing my alto saxophone in the wind ensemble, as well as the marching band. Cool. And Jaden is a former student of mine. I was her band director in middle school, and I'm extremely proud of the musician and young woman she's become. And she's also, she won't tell you this, but a fantastic journalist and writes exceptionally well. So congratulations, Jaden. So welcome everyone, welcome to the students, welcome to everybody that's that's watching online. My name is Ryan Zona, I'm the Strategic Programs Director for the Grammy Music Education Coalition. And with us today, we have five students from around the country and they're all getting interviewed by an, a music educator and author, Lori Schwartz-Reichel. We're excited to have them uh, today. Thank you for the introductions and back over to you, Lori. Okay, awesome. Our first question is to you, Jaden Howard. What have you missed about school through virtual learning? The thing I miss most is really the face-to-face -face interaction, whether that's with like my peers or teachers. I just feel like you grew more personal connections and it's just not the same as like virtually talking, texting or shooting an email. And I feel like with teachers and like in person at school, you could ask questions then and there and get an answer. But then online, you have to um, now virtually, you have to like, shoot an email and like wait a couple of days to respond. And it's just not as efficient as it used to be. Right. And you and I were talking the other day, Jade, and we were saying it's not that the teachers don't want to get back to you. It's just that they have so much on their plate and yeah. trying to get back to every email. And then when a teacher does respond, do you feel sometimes like, oh, my gosh, now I have to ask another question and you're waiting again for more explanation? Yeah, definitely. It's just like a long cycle that just keeps repeating. Okay. All right, thanks. Um, our other Jaden, would you like to answer what have you missed about school through virtual learning? Yeah, so same as Jaden Howard, like I missed like the being able to see another person, being able for them to explain the schoolwork or whatever we're learning at the time. Like if I don't understand it, it's hard for me to understand without another person explaining it differently than my teacher could. Cool. Awesome. And Madden, what are some things that you miss? Um, I agree with um, Jaden and Jaden. Um, definitely I miss my friends and social like connectedness. Um, but I also miss like people who aren't my close friends, just interactions with um, them and like chats because you can't really talk in Zoom classes and also with teachers. Um, and sometimes in Zoom classes, it feels hard to like intervene and like ask a 
question or like when you know it's going to be a long conversation because um whereas on emails it's like like Jaden and you said um it feels like it's not it, you know we have to get back wait for them to get back and then you have to email them yeah and you and I Matt and we're talking the other day that you know sometimes having a student sitting right next to you really inspires and motivates you or can you can turn to a student and ask a question very quickly or vice versa you can be that exemplar or role model for the student sitting next to you so it takes away that human connection and that motivational piece okay. yeah Michael what do you miss Probably just the same as everybody else face to face interaction. That's because it always takes like um, teachers like a few hours and then you're already done with that assignment. So yeah. Do you feel like there's a lot of time lost because you're waiting to either complete or do the next assignment? Yep, definitely. definitely. Um, okay. And Jillian, what about you? What are some things that you miss? I miss encouragement from my teachers and whenever I'm stuck on a problem, I can't just raise my hand and the teacher will come over. Like I have to email or like send a thing on Class Dojo because that's what we use. And then she doesn't respond right away like other people said. And then I probably will be done with my work by the time she gets back to me. So then there's really no point. Right. You, you sort of mentioned the human connection part. I, I didn't realize as a teacher how much I missed, you know, giving a fist bump or a high five as encouragement to my students. So I can imagine that everyone, even to the youngest students, really miss that a lot. Okay. Jaden Mandler Sanders, I'd like you to answer this question first. What have you liked or found to be beneficial through virtual learning? Something I found beneficial through virtual learning is that we can learn on our own pace. Like, you know how our assignments are like weekly instead of like daily, like you're in school. And so like in school, you're rushed to learn and stuff like that. But through virtual learning, you can learn at your own pace. You have time to learn stuff and understand it. So you mentioned pace. Are you finding that you're moving faster with virtual learning or slower? What has that been like for you? It's been slower because um, the assignments are like weekly. Okay, great. But you have the time through the week, whereas you might have an assignment given one day if you were live at school. But for this, you have it through the whole week that you can work on, correct? Yeah. So are you finding that you're going back and making improvements through the week on your work product? Yeah. Cool, great, okay. Um, Madden, what have you liked or found to be beneficial through virtual learning? Um, I definitely say that for me, like the flexibility of it, cause I usually have classes and um, big breaks in between. Um, so then I can like plan on doing my homework in between one class or practicing music or and also just having the time and space to um, work on certain things or recreational and creative like activities or songwriting and stuff like that. Yeah. As a parent and a, an educator, I'm appreciating the flexibility very much too, but I can imagine for students, um, it's nice if you wanted to just go outside and take a break, correct? Or yeah. if you wanted to sit down at the piano or your guitar and, you know, sing or play something, are you finding that to be motivational to then go back and continue on screen with your learning? Definitely, like having the breaks in between and time to do that is, yeah, definitely very helpful. And are you um, collaborating with your siblings since you're all home now? Yes, um, me and my, well, my older sister, um, we like to sing together and then my younger sister, I like to help her practice a little bit, um, learning ukulele, so. <laughs> okay, Michael, what about you? What have you liked or found to be beneficial through virtual learning? Probably that I always have homework assignments. So once you get that homework assignment, you don't have to do it right the next day. Uh, you have more time to do it instead of it just being due the next day. 
And how are you handling the time management of that, Michael? Are you finding that you're waiting until the end of the week to do all your assignments? Or are you pretty good with spacing things out? I'm probably uh, doing a little bit of each every day. Okay, great. And has your family set up a, a schedule that you have to stick with for your schooling and your music practicing? Um, well, I usually just do that on my own, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Great. So it sounds like you, you're pretty motivated and you're keeping on track. Good job, Michael. All right, Jillian, what about you? What have you missed, or excuse me, what have you liked or found beneficial through virtual learning? One thing that's beneficial is that both the kids and the teachers can learn like more about how to use some like applications like with technology so they learn how to use things like I forget what it's called uh, but yeah you like get to learn more about technology are you using anything like the acapella app or any certain music software or tools that you're using Jillian um not really no not music apps, just like student teacher apps. Okay. Are you using Schoolology or what are you using? Um, my teacher uses Class Dojo to send things out. Okay, great. And finally, Jaden Howard, what have you liked or found to be beneficial through virtual learning? So for Howard County, all of our work is due on Friday at um, 10 a.m. So no matter what class, it's just due on Friday. And I really like that because you're able to do work throughout the week to fit around your schedule. You don't have to do it all on one day and have it due the next day versus like going to school and have being um, different due dates and it can be kind of confusing. So I like how it's just all one due date. Great, awesome. So what I'm hearing from everybody, some key words here that you found to be really beneficial have been pace, that you can work at your own pace with this, um, meaning if you need to spend more time on something or if you can get through things a lot faster, the flexibility to do what you want if you wanted to take a break to go outside or make music for recreation on your own. Keeping up with the time management piece though, finding the time to make sure that you're doing what you need to be doing and use of technology, I think is awesome, so great. Madden, I'd like to start with you with our next question. What have you found to be the most limiting during virtual learning, specifically with music education? Um, so I forgot to mention before, but I also really enjoy musical theater. Um, and right now I'm in the show Beauty and the Beast. So if you're in an ensemble or a band or an orchestra or a show, it's really hard to, especially with um, distractions and sounds and practice to practice together. Um, also with the lag on Zoom. Um, so you, it's, you can't really like practice with other people and, or collaborate. Um, so we're find um, me and my friends, we're finding that we have to send in pre-recorded videos and then in rehearsals, um, sing over it with, while you're muted. Um, and when you do that, I feel like it's, I don't know, it's hard to make your voices or instruments as balanced and um, blended. And then also in school, you can just pull a teacher or a partner or someone aside and ask questions, um, kind of like we said before. Um, but now you have to like email back and forth and it's kind of harder to just get if you're confused. Um, so it sounds to me like you're mentioning feedback that it's taking a little bit of time sometimes to get feedback from your instructor or your teacher. But it seems like you're doing some um, great things with your friends, maybe off hours of, of learning time that you're working with them to try to get better. So you're, you're coming up with ways to get around those limitations. Okay. Um, Jilly, or excuse me, Michael, what about you? What have you found to be the most limiting during virtual learning? Working with others because um, back then you could just arrange like at lunch, you could go to the band room and practice a little bit with others. But now um, you can't really do that at all because of like the leg and stuff. Right. And so you're missing that time. You're missing 
playing with your friends, performing with your friends, and, and also getting that feedback as well from your teacher, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jillian, what about you? What have you found to be the most limiting during virtual learning? Well, in my school, we have lessons for specific instruments each week. And if you play an instrument, you're paired with other instrument, other people who play the same instruments and you get to play together with them. But I don't really like playing by myself. I like playing with other people for like inspiration. And um, I can't like play with other people now because stuck at home. But you do have your brother and your mom and dad at home. Have you been doing anything with them musically since you don't have your peers that are all the same age? Well, um, not with the instruments, but I made a family talent show for the four of us and we did that and did, put it on Facebook Live and it was fun. That's awesome. So it sounds like you found a way to perform with others, maybe not necessarily in a band or a chorus or an orchestra setting, but you're still performing by doing that way. So great. And it sounds like you're missing the inspiration from other people, correct? Mm -hmm. Did you have a, a group of friends at school that really inspired each other to practice or to do well with, with your music performing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Jaden Howard, what about you? What have you found to be the most limiting? I think the most limiting was being able to like not receive guidance from like my band director because he plays the same instrument as me. So if I needed help with something, he could like specifically help me with the alto saxophone, as well as being able to like play with the band and work towards an end goal of like a concert or performance. I just really find that we can't practice together because some kids don't have an instrument at home or they have like different situations. So it's not really effective to practice online. Right, with, uh, with others. Yeah. Are, are you carving out that time at home to get your individual practicing in? Yeah, cause I don't, <laughs> yeah. Cause I don't really know what to, what to exactly work on but I try to find things um, like warm-ups or like uh look online and use like old practice books that I use for lessons and stuff so great so you're going back through the resources that you have at home yeah looking for supplemental material to use um if you're not always getting it um virtually so good yeah. for you right and Jaden Mandler Sanders what about you what have you um found to be the most limiting what I found to be the most limiting is that during our weekly Zoom meetings for like band is that we can't really like practice as a full band. We just like play separately as like when we're muted and it just seems like weird, like we're not really getting anywhere. Right. You're not hearing the other parts, correct? Yeah. So you're missing that. And you're a percussionist. So um, often what do you usually play, snare or do you um vary through all the different percussion instruments i vary through all the different stuff and what is your favorite percussion instrument probably snare probably snare <laughs> cool awesome all right so it sounds like what i'm hearing is what you're finding to be the most limiting is feedback um, be it that you might be getting it, but it might be coming slower than what you're usually used to getting and usually used to getting it immediately face to face, um, that you really miss working with others and it's limiting that you can't perform with others because we've talked about the lag time and things like that, um, that the inspiration is limiting too because we often find motivation in our peers and, and what we're doing. And then that lack of guidance that we're not quite, you know, our, your teachers might think that they're giving it to you through instructions, um, either written to you or a video or so forth, but it's just not the same, right? That if you can ask an immediate question right away. All right. So, oh, so if you're joining, yeah, great job, everyone. So if you're joining us online right now and you want to ask a question of these awesome students, please do so. Please put it in the comment box and we'll interject it when appropriate. Or if you want to ask a question of myself or Lori as well, we are happy to take those. So just put those in at any time and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Back to you, Lori. Michael, could you please start off with our next question? And the question is, 
Should virtual learning continue into the upcoming academic year, what changes would benefit you and all students and your learning experiences? Meaning, what would you like your teachers to know or consider if we would have to keep planning to teach virtually? If we were gonna keep on doing this, um, I would say set up a little more Zoom meetings. But if we weren't gonna do this up through the upcoming years, uh, I would be really happy about that because I feel like I'm so used to what we always did and now it's just on screen. Right. And so you brought up the Zoom meetings or the Google chat meetings and things like that. Um, students, can you raise your hand? Um, how many of you meet more than once a week with your music teachers online? So only two of you. So Jillian, Jaden, and Michael, you're only seeing your music teachers once or, or not at all, correct? Yeah, and I think Jillian, you're gonna kind of share a little bit about that with us later. Okay, great. So why don't we move right on to Jillian? So um, tell, would you let us know what you think about benefit, what would benefit all students if we continued to move forward with this? Well, not all the teachers in my school do Zoom meetings. And the teachers that I have, like one of my teachers doesn't do Zoom meetings at all. But my band and orchestra director, she has done two, not like weekly, but like just two in general. And I would like to see my classmates and my teachers more <laughs> than just that. And I, I know as an educator that has a lot to do with what restrictions either the school or the school system is putting in place for those teachers or those grades. For instance, it seems like more flexibility is being allowed for the upper grades and the secondary students and teachers to be able to Zoom or to meet virtually. And some of the schools are not allowing the youngest students, and Jillian, you're one of our youngest here, um, to meet face to face with some of their students. So you, you would love to see that more often, right, Jillian? Yes. Yeah, cool. Aiden. So Jillian, we have a quick question for you. So, uh, so this one's to Jillian from Sandra Kim, Kim Emil, it looks like to me. Uh, I'd like to know when Jillian will be putting another talent show together for Facebook Live. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> so TBD on that one, right? <laughs> Julian, we'd all like to get in on that, okay? <laughs> all right, let's move on to Jaden Howard. Um, should virtual learning continue? Uh, what would you think would benefit yourself and all students in their learning experiences? Um, I really feel like having more open communication with the teachers, whether that's through like more uh, video chats designated for help sessions, or like if you have any yeah, questions, or just, um, yeah, just more like video chats because I would meet with every class only once a week and I know I would have probably more questions than at one time in class. So I just feel like, yeah. And that would certainly, that would certainly solve the issue that you were saying, Jaden, where it's taking a while to get the email responses back from your teacher. So if you had an opportunity to do a video help session once a week and what do you think? Probably optional, right? Like if yeah, you optional. wanted, yeah, optional video help sessions where if you had those questions, if you just wanted to get that extra face-to-face -face time with your teachers, um, and that would allow for some more open communication. Cool. Yeah. Anything else, Jane and Howard? Um, and I'm not really sure. Maybe just I know they have like they're probably swamped with emails, so I can't really like expect a lot of like an instant reply. So. I think the video chats are good. I think that's a great suggestion. Yeah. The more that you can see if if it fits into your teacher's schedule and um, their workload. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Jada Man Mandler Sanders? Um, what would you suggest if this would continue? Um, I suggest like some of my teachers don't do like Zoom meetings at all, and others like require that you go to the um, like optional like Zoom meetings that they have so that they don't get flooded with emails and so like the teachers that don't do zoom meetings should do them because 
so they don't have the issue of being flooded by emails and the students can just come to the Zoom like meetings. Okay, great. And what about you, Madden? Um, any suggestions? Um, I know this is a lot of what other people said, but definitely um, sometimes it feels like teachers are just piling on work um, and then not as much in Zoom classes. So not like adding more work on, but if it's possible to have more Zoom sessions that kind of substitute for some of that work. Um, and then also, um, I don't know if this is a thing, but like private meets, I heard some people do that. Um, for like questions or like one on one for the teacher to check in or if you need help um, with some sort of work or just help sessions and stuff. So what I'm hearing from all of you is that it sounds like you're making this work to the extent that you can, um, but that you're missing that face to face communication and really missing the opportunity to ask a teacher a question live and get that response back one on one. And what I'm hearing pretty much from all of you is if the teacher's schedules allow maybe more opportunities to meet face to face or opportunities specifically for the younger students to be able to see their teachers. Um, I know my daughter is four years old. She goes to preschool a few days a week and she's just missing seeing her teacher's face, you know, and that would be very reassuring to her if she would be able to see Miss Destiny and maybe get that smile from her and some encouraging words. And what you're asking for is to get that feedback and that motivation right away. Okay, excellent. So Jillian, could you please tell us how have you maintained your passion for making music during quarantine while not in school with your friends and teachers? Well, as I said before, I hosted a talent show for my family and my school hosted a virtual talent show on Flipgrid that I sang in and I got an echo dot not too long ago and I keep playing music and singing along with it and I fiddle around with the piano sometimes when I'm absolutely bored and yeah I've just included music with almost everything I do. So can I ask you what song did you sing for your talent show? I sang this song called Dynasty. And are you singing songs that you already know? Or are you making up some songs as you go along and improvising? Well, I sing songs that are already made and I've started writing some things down in case I ever want to make a song. Great. Wow, that's fantastic. So are you looking into some different types of software maybe where you could create your own music or compose it? Or are you just writing the lyrics down? I'm just writing words down in a notebook. Well, your mother is excellent at taking songs and swapping out the words. So we'll expect the next time we Zoom, we'll like to hear a song from you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jillian. Jaden Howard, what about you? How are you maintaining your passion for making music? Well, as a rising senior, it's all about like college readiness or preparing for the future outside of high school. So I've just been researching like the audition requirements for certain colleges because I plan on continuing music specifically like in marching band. So I've been able to have a lot of time on my hands. So I've been researching the audition requirements and getting more time to like prepare. So you probably wouldn't have that available time right now with spring trips, spring performances, you know, March and April were big adjudication times, specifically in Maryland for ensembles. So you're getting this time or you've had this time that you, you wouldn't have had. Great. And some of these audition requirements, are they providing the music that you have to perform or are they giving you an opportunity to choose selections? Uh, they're giving us an opportunity to choose selections. Like it's certain levels too. Like um, I think it would be at like a level four music, level three music. And then like scales, like all of the major scales with two octaves if possible. So just be prepared for that. Great. So you're making sure all your fundamentals are in place with your scale. Yeah. Touching up on that. Yeah. <laughs> Jaden Mandler Sanders, what about you? How have you maintained your passion for making music? 
Um, I listen to a lot of music quite often, and then I can practice on like a practice pad whenever I feel like doing that. What type of music do you like to listen to? Mm, not really sure. It's, I don't know. It's like Are different you? every time. What, so very eclectic mix. Are you in the marching band? Yeah. Do you like to listen to marching band music and, and pretend like you're playing along? Yeah, I do that sometimes. I like to go through marching band music and listen to it. Neat. Cool. And you're playing on a uh, drum pad, so you're not you're not distracting everybody in your house, <laughs> right, by playing yeah. on the snare at all times. Okay. But mm -hmm. great, you're keeping up with those skills. Wonderful. Madam, what about you? How are you maintaining your passion for music making? Well, um, I have been, I started a YouTube and I try to post a cover a week or as much as I can. Um, and then I've been working on songwriting. I do play with my siblings sometimes. Um, and I've been trying to listen to the new Music Friday playlist so that I can like, I don't know, expand my, um, you know, music that I listen to. So are you finding the time to, to compose and create some things now that you might not typically have at the end of the school year? Yeah, definitely going back to that idea of flexibility. I, it's also nice just in between classes um, so that I can, um, you know, just relax and take a break for a second and work on songwriting. And you mentioned earlier that you're a part of a musical. Um, I think you told me the other day that you're Belle in Beauty and the Beast, is that correct? Yeah. And now tell us a little bit about how will that virtual performance occur? Um, well, so we have practices two times a week. And um, basically what we do is like the, for the first half of the show, we practiced all of it and made sure everyone knew um, everything. And then we sent in recordings so that they would put them on a track um, and so that we can sing over them, but muted. Um, and we recorded that because on Zoom you can record stuff. Um, and then we did that with the second half and today we're actually gonna finish the show. And so it's gonna be like a little movie. Um, yeah, it's fun. Do you think that you'll ever get to do the show live or do you think that once this virtual performance is over, it'll the book will be closed on it? Yeah, I, I think that there was like the option of like maybe like pushing it to next year or something, but I think it's once we finish it, it's done, so. Yeah. And students, a show of hands, Madden mentioned that she's doing a virtual performance. Have any of you, e either with your choirs, orchestra, or bands, have you produced a virtual performance? Jillian, you have, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, my band and orchestra director sent out a link to do a virtual performance for and two different links for band and orchestra. She recorded herself conducting and she picked out a piece because both the, we have two separate bands and orchestras. We have advanced band and beginning band and we have advanced orchestra and, and beginning orchestra. Um, she sent out a piece that all of us could play, like that both the beginners and the advanced people could play together and she, made a video of herself conducting it, and then we got to play along with it. That's wonderful. Great. So nobody else has had virtual performance experiences? No? Okay. Michael, let's finish this question with you. How have you maintained your passion for making music during this time? Probably just practicing a little bit. Like, um, I would say I practice a normal amount, probably just a little bit on that day, a little bit on that day. Well, should I check in with your band director to see if you are practicing enough, Michael? <laughs> no, <laughs> he's like, no. All right, so what I'm hearing from everybody is um, array of different answers for this. Um, you've been maintaining your music by creating some neat things. So Jillian, Jillian was talking about the talent show that she had created and she had done. Um, Jaden Howard was talking about preparing and being college and career ready and getting prepared for her college auditions and starting to look at the music and the requirements for that. Uh, Jaden Mandler Sanders talked about he's listening 
to music a little bit more and practicing because he's missing, um, you know, hearing the music live and so forth. Um, Madden and Jillian talked about their virtual performances and the opportunities that they're still having to produce music and have an audience hear it, even though if it is virtually. And um, Michael, you also talked a little bit about practicing and making sure that you're still getting your time in from there. So I know as an educator, I'm glad to hear that you're maintaining your music making in very different ways at home. Many of you are doing that with your families as well, um, that you have musical families or your parents are music teachers and they're keeping you on track with that. So wonderful. Uh, Ryan, did you have any questions that have come in before we go on to our last one? We, we do, we have, we have about five questions here and I think we can, we can, um, slice and dice them a couple different ways. Um, I'll go from top to bottom. W would it help um, to have the section leaders conduct Zoom practice sessions in smaller groups as a play along? So instead of having the whole band necessarily in place, and I, I know some of you are in middle school, maybe section leaders might be more of a high school thing in band, but uh, you know, would, do you think that would be beneficial to sort of break it down and maybe just have the trumpets practice together or, or what have you? Jaden Mandler Sanders, do you want to answer that since you're in high school band? Sure. Um, since we do have section leaders, we could do that. But for since virtual learning has started, we haven't really like worked on a piece. We've been doing warm ups and stuff like that. But if this continued through the fall, would you think that that would be beneficial if the section leaders um, maybe led those? Yeah, if this continued, that would definitely be helpful to like. So we could actually hear everyone else like and see how they're doing and do you think that your teacher would need to be there to moderate that and facilitate or do you think you could do that on your own as mature musicians you could probably do it on our own i'm wondering if if students in certain schools are already doing that maybe they are how about you jaden howard you're in high school band as well in marching band what do you think about that regarding section leaders yeah, well, I'm the section leader for alto saxophone, so I definitely think that if we do host those uh, video chats, those private video chats with our sections, that would definitely help. And I think that the teacher can just give us like guidance and like regulations to follow when doing those, and then we can be off on our own. And would you be very eager to do that as a section leader? Yeah, definitely. Would you find that you you would probably I know you enjoy putting together like a little plan for that rehearsal, correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Ryan, do you have more questions? Uh, uh, yeah, of course. So up next, uh, this one says, I'd like to know if anyone had any projects using Soundtrap, GarageBand, or acapella during this time, uh, or if they use something that specifically allowed student collaboration. Did students ever set up their own Zooms to work on a project? Um, Madden, do you want to start with that? Sure. Well, I didn't work like directly in GarageBand, but I know for like the musical theater for Beauty and the Beast, um, we all had to send in recordings and then they would put that on all together on GarageBand, I think she used, um, to, so that we could sing along to it and not be um, completely, um, you, you know, muted and not hear anything. Um, and then in terms of, I do know me and my friends, some of them, um, FaceTimed um, and practiced a little together um, on our own time. Yeah. Um, Ryan, as a as a private instructor in my saxophone studio, I'm using the acapella app, which is something I never would have thought to, to use prior, but now I'm using it. The first couple of weeks I had each student produce a duet with him or herself. So they would record part A and then record part B and the application would sync it together. In the next week or so, I'll be introducing a peer. So one of the duet parts will be played by one student in the studio and one will be played by another. So they'll start to collaborate that way. And I believe that the acapella app uses up to nine parts. So for that particular application, nine different musicians or nine different parts could be played. And so I'm enjoying experimenting with that. Jaden, have you done anything like that? Jaden Howard, I'm sorry, Jaden Howard. Um, not really, but that did sound interesting. I think I might have to try it. I mostly use just like a sound corset for a metronome and tuner. I don't have really experience with the acapella app. So. Jaden Mandler-Sanders, how about you? 
I haven't used anything like that before. Would you be open to that um, type of collaboration with another student or a handful of others? Probably, if we had like the opportunity to. I know, unfortunately, Ryan, some school districts and systems are putting a restriction on what software and application they can use. Um, and obviously, private teachers um, are much more flexible in what they can use and what they can experiment with. But I've heard from colleagues throughout the nation, oh, my school system won't let us use YouTube videos. And then I heard from colleagues, actually Jillian in, in your mom's school district that are saying, no, we want you to use YouTube videos because they seem to be the most accessible for students and teachers. So we're getting many mixed messages across the nation as to what is being utilized and what is being restricted and so forth. Excellent. And one of the things I think that you could think about during this time um, is really looking at how you're interfacing with music, right? And there are tons of free apps out there that help with songwriting, beat making. Uh, Tully is one, T-U-L-L-Y. You can write your own song lyrics on it. You can make your own beats. Uh, Dolby On has a free app as well where you can do uh, professional sound recording and video recording with the Dolby technology built in. So there's a lot of opportunity to sort of be creative and figure out what's out there for free. And this leads into our next question of, and this might be uh, more for you and I, Lori, is we've seen music awards do Zoom performances on television. Is there a standard virtual toolkit of resources that can be leveraged to help music educators implement this for their classes? Uh, and one thing I do want to point out is on GrammyMusicEd.org, we have all of our coalition's resources up there. So any music educator that's out there or students, they can go to GrammyMusicEd.org click where it says coalition hub and that'll give you a list of, of free resources and of course there are other sites that have done very similar things uh such as save the music and nafme so what do you think Gloria, about a standard uh virtual toolkit i think that's fantastic um this has actually ryan been a conversation among my very close-knit colleagues um here in maryland pennsylvania and th beyond how much virtual performance and teaching do we want to do and how much do we want to show our administrators and community that we can do because the fear is if we show them the administrators that oh we can do band orchestra and chorus virtually we don't have to be in a band room with a hundred students or in a choir room or we don't need 50 minutes of the academic schedule to have rehearsals then are they going to think that we don't need that and they can take that out of the schedule? So I think the resources are phenomenal. Um, I have so many um, gifted colleagues throughout the nation who have been creating these resources, have been creating these forums and social media um, discussions and things like that. Um, I just am hesitant. How much of that do we do? Yes, there's a need for it right now. But if we show that we can do everything in music education digitally, will the school systems then start thinking that we don't need to be in the schedule full time, that the students don't have to have band sectionals, they don't have to have orchestra sectionals. Huh, we don't need to do a performance in school for the whole school community to see. We can just throw it out on YouTube and have the performance there available. So there are so many benefits to doing things digitally and virtually, particularly in a limited setting in a restricted setting like this. Um, but I'm just cautious of, I don't want to do too much and I don't want to show school system leaders that we can do everything virtually for fear that, you know, budget cuts usually start with music programs. Yeah, and I think what we're hearing from the students today is how much that they, they miss that interconnection and that, that um, relationships that develop, like it's some of those things that you just can't, you can't recreate in a virtual environment uh, as you're looking forward. And one of the questions that we have up uh, says basically, what songs are you listening to right now? Are there any songs that you've gravitated toward to maybe like help get you through this time or, or just that connect with you at this point? Jaden Howard, do you want to start? Is there a particular song, maybe based on its motivational lyrics or something that is getting you through um, this time? 
Um, not really, but I'm really open to listening to the playlists because I have Apple Music, so I listen to a bunch of different playlists and maybe like motivational music. So like it's just various various songs really that I like. Um, Michael, what about you? Is there any particular song or music that you're turning to right now for motivation? No, not really. I'm not really listening to songs. Um, I'm just watching like shows and stuff. I don't usually listen to too much song. So that's something that I'm sure your music teacher will be emailing you about afterwards um, for some exemplars to be listening. And Jaden Mandler Sanders, you're sort of our role model right now for taking the time to listen to music. And you had said you have a real eclectic mix that you're enjoying, but is there any particular song that you've been turning to a lot for motivation? Not really. It's just like, whatever I feel like listening to at the moment. Madden, what about you? Um, I mean, I have like different like playlists, um, like Jaden said, but there's not a, I did do like a cover of the song Rise Up the other, like a couple weeks ago. And like, I was listening to that song and it is like very, um, yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, that, ha that has great motivation in yeah. it. Jillian, what about you? Um, I, I don't know why, but I start, I've started to really like listening to the greatest showman music. And my favorite song is probably This Is Me. Great. And start, you're finding that you're listening to that a little bit more now mm -hmm. and pretty often. Great. Okay. So let's also talk about reading. So, um, and music literacy. Are there any of you that are, have taken some time to either read about some musicians or artists or composers during this time? Anybody? No, okay. So that's something that maybe we could do. So that's one of our standards is music literacy. And so maybe taking some time to, you know, find out who your most, um, one of the most famous artists that you love and looking into that person and, and finding. Um, Ryan, do you have any more questions? Oh, we have one more. And I think this ties directly into what your next question may be. So the question is, I would like to know what they would tell an administrator slash principal when asked, why is it important to keep music in our schools? Cool. Well, actually, do you want me? I'll just roll into the next question because I think that's a perfect segue. <laughs> so, okay. So we have heard that some schools have chosen to lessen the frequency of music make participation optional or even pass fail during this time, or even worse, eliminate it from the online academic schedule during the last few months. We've even heard recently that the Randolph Public School System in Massachusetts has cut K through 12 arts, music, and physical education programs from their 2020 to 2021, 20, the upcoming school year budget. Jaden Howard, um, let's, let's ask this to you um, as the oldest student in this group. What would you like to say to school leaders who may be considering cutting music from schools? Um, I would like to say that music education, it isn't a club that is disposable and it's a class like uh, English and math and it's just as important. And I feel like if they cut that from schools, they're cutting an outlet that many students turn to. And I find it really important. And especially since I got that introduction in elementary school, I feel like if they cut it from elementary school, those students will lack that introduction and they won't have those skills to help them in middle school or high school bands or to even like continue their interest in music or gain their interest in music. I can speak um, as a secondary band director and I spent most of my career as a middle school band director that middle school is tough, right? Madden, you could probably say that too as a middle schooler. It's a tough time. Um, we're changing physically, emotionally, mentally. We're finding who we like, what we like, what we don't like, who we don't like and so forth. And for a student, middle school can be a very scary time for them to even enter the building. Do I look like my peers? Are they accepting of what I look like and how I sound and what I have to offer as talents? And sometimes the music classroom, be it 
a music technology class, a compositional class, band, orchestra, choir, general music, is the safest place for students to go. It's where they feel accepted. It's where they feel safe. Sometimes it's the only reason why they get out of bed in the morning to go to school. Um, I was fortunate in high school that I had band first period. And I know it got many of my peers out of bed in the morning because they wanted to be there for band. Now, did they stay throughout the whole school day? Oh, not all of them. Um, but if band wasn't at that first period, you know, would how many of them would have missed first period and how many of them would have rolled in at 10 o'clock and so forth. So I think it's a reason to get up in the morning. It's a reason to go to school. It's a reason to become a member of an ensemble or an organization where you're creating a unit of production and sound together and you're relying on those in your class to do that. Um, we often say as music educators, you know, you can, you can earn you know, a 60% in science or in English or in social studies. But if you give 60% effort in your band or your orchestra or your choir, then you're not giving of yourself what your other members are giving. And everybody is relying on you as a musician to give your most and to give your best. Um, other students, um, do you have anything else that you would like to offer or what you would like to say to school leaders who are considering cutting music? We're at, um, we're coming up on this budget crunch time. Anybody else like to share? Um, I guess this is kind of the same as what um, you were saying, but also just especially right now when a lot of people feel like their lives are like lacking this community and like connectedness, it's really I don't know, it feels really nice to like be a part, be a part of a community of people who like share the same interest as you um, and passion as you in music and stuff like that. Um, and also it's just like a great motivation in terms of school um, to be able to have that, yeah. Matt, and I think you hit it up, the nail on the head with two words that you said. You said community. So it's a community of people that are aiming for the same goal and have the same vision. You don't have that in science class. Everybody's coming in to learn their own material, but what are they doing as a community to collaborate together? And then you also use the word connectedness um, to feel connected to your peers, either within your voice part, your, your saxophone section, the percussion line, you know, so forth. All right. Um, so that takes us to the end of the questions that I have, Ryan. Um, I would just like to share that, you know, this has been amazing to interview all of these fantastic students. And um, when I chose, you know, who the students were, be, we were thinking about diversity in many different ways across the nation, male, female, band, orchestra, chorus, elementary, middle, and high school students. Um, and it was my goal to really get a collective amount of students here that could offer unique answers and, and share their experiences with us. I'd also love to say that as an educator, um, it has been incredible to watch music education come together at this time and to share our wealth of knowledge with each other. Um, the amount of free resources that have been put out there and have become available. Um, for instance, um, I'm the author of um, a series in the Intune Monthly Magazine and we put out eight different articles a year. And if you go to intunemonthly.digital, um, students and teachers can get those resources for free. Smart Music has put out a lot of free things. Tons of publishers have put out a lot of free music and resources and opportunities. Um, things that we would have paid an arm and a leg for before are free to us now um, and a way of, for us to provide to our students to keep them engaged and active during this time. So thanks students for your answers. And I hope that the educators that are watching are really listening to you and taking to heart what you have to say. Thank you so much, Lori. A special thank you to Jaden, Jaden, Jillian, Madden, and Michael.
Cole for joining us today. And a very, very special thank you to Lori Swartreichel, who did an amazing job and just all around a wonderful experience. And, and, and I too hope that everybody really takes a listen and, and uh, uses this as a catalyst to talk to your students about what they're going through, about what they're experiencing, about what they want more of. Talk to educators about how to make those experiences better throughout everything that we're doing. Thank you for joining us on the various platforms that you're watching on. And I hope that you join us tomorrow on uh, our Instagram Live Masterclass, which is hosted by Sophia Basilar with her special guest, Cameron Carpenter, who's an organist. Uh, this all happening on GMC's Facebook Live and Instagram channels at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And a thank you from the Grammy Music Education Coalition for being here. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to our channels. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you next week.